One of the organisms you're no doubt going to see at the rocky shore is the blue periwinkle. The blue periwinkle is one of the most abundant organisms in the upper littoral zone or the upper tidal zone of the rocky shore. It's a small mollusk that is uh, herbivorous. It, it moves around eating the uh, algae and the like and off the rocks with a little radula or, or like scrapey type um, appendage or, or, or mouth structure. So it, it, it tends to live primarily in the upper part of the tidal zone or the upper littoral zone. So if we just kind of draw a rocky shore here, so this is affected by tide. So we might say the low tide mark is here um, and the high tide mark is say up here. So we'd find our uh, blue periwinkle probably in this sort of zone here in the upper littoral zone. So that means that there's large periods of time uh, each tide cycle when the blue periwinkle is actually out of the water. So with that in mind, let's think about the abiotic factors that the blue periwinkle might uh, be exposed to. The, the, the real main point here is it's about exposure. It's exposure to um, life outside of the water. So it, when we talk about exposure, we mean there's low water. And of course, it's underwater is when the, the mollusks are able to breathe. So we've got a situation where they've actually got low oxygen and they've got a real risk of drying out or desiccation. Desiccation means drying out. Desiccation, so there's a risk of desiccation. Uh, of course, they also have um, a wave action that they're exposed to. And uh, I guess probably in terms of exposure, we're also talking about the sun and heat exposure as well. So the, the real issue up in the higher area is that length of time out of the water every single tide. So the big issue here is about exposure, but there's also the physical pounding of the waves as well. So for every organism to be able to succeed in its niche, it needs to be able to tolerate the abiotic factors. And so for that to occur, uh, it needs to have adaptations and adaptations are characteristics of an organism that allows it to survive. Adaptations, and so not adaptions, it's adaptations. Adaptations are characteristics. So importantly, I don't want you to call them changes because organisms don't change. Species change over time to become better adapted to the abiotic factors in which they're exposed to. So the adaptations are characteristics of a species that allows it to survive in a, uh, in a habitat. So let's have a look at the different types of adaptations and we're going to look more specifically about uh, what are the blue, blue periwinkles adaptations. So first of all we've got structural or anatomical adaptations. Now they're obviously the physical characteristics of an organism. And for the blue periwinkle, it's got a hard uh, shell that is impermeable to water. So that um, prevents the water from, you know, so when it's out of the water, it, uh, it hooks onto the rock, uh, sucks onto the rock. And um, so if you imagine when it's out of the water, it sucks onto the rock and this hard shell prevents water loss. So we have decreased water loss because of this impermeable shell. So that's one of the structural adaptations. The next thing we have is, beha um, is behavioral adaptations. Behavioral adaptations is obviously how an organism behaves. And a couple of things that the, the blue periwinkle does is it seeks shelter in, in, in crevices between rocks, because in those crevices there's, um, there's often shade and there's decreased temperatures, so it's not as hot. Um, so they do that to avoid drying out. The other thing that they tend to do, because there's so many of them, 
and one of the, um, the highest um, density, most abundant organisms. So they tend to clump together. Now, of course, they're, they're motile organisms. That means that they move around, but they're able to move close together to, um, to sort of retain water and prevent water loss. Again, it's to decrease water loss. So that's a behavior. So they move around. Uh, when the tide goes out, they move around to the crevices, so they're in the shade. They clump together, so again, you've got a larger surface area, reduce the water loss. And the other type of adaptation is physiological. So we're talking about the metabolic processes within the organism. And physiologically, what these organisms do when they're out of the water is they can reduce their metabolic rate. So they've got a, a, a reduced uh, demand for oxygen. They slow down all of their body processes so they're not consuming oxygen when they're out of, uh, as quickly when they're out of the water. So they slow or reduce the metabolic rate. Okay, so they're not using as much oxygen. So this is just one organism on the rocky shore and it's got a whole series of adaptations for it to be able to cope with and tolerate living in this area. Its job is to, uh, to eat and keep down the, the algae and the lichen on the rocks. Uh, and and it, So the adaptations of our blue periwinkle allow it to be able to live in this area here. Now, it has, think about niche again, we've got uh, preferred niche and we've got realized niche. Now, it would certainly be able to tolerate living further down the rocky shore. So if we can say that this is their ideal niche, you know, they've got the adaptations to be able to tolerate living in all of this area. However, there's greater competition down here from all the other mollusks and other types of organisms as well. So um, what it tends to happen is that its actual realized niche is not as big as its ideal niche. Uh, it, it retracts up um, so it's most abundant in this higher tide area because there's less competition up here. And this is a realized. So I guess the take home message here, I keep on coming back to this idea of niche, but the, um, the distribution of a species in an ecosystem is related to two things. It's related to its adaptations to the abiotic factors and also to its interaction with other organisms. And in this case, its realized niche has shrunk somewhat because of competition with other species that have a similar niche.